What is going on, everybody? James Hancock here, back to review the first three episodes of season two of The Boys, which dropped today on Amazon. My understanding is that every Friday moving forward, they're going to be dropping one or two new episodes. There are eight episodes total in the season. And my quick 25 words or less spoiler-free analysis is that I think season two is a little stronger, at least so far, than season one. It absolutely has my full attention. All the wild and outrageous scenes and characters that we expect from the boys, they are here with a vengeance. But if I were to offer one critique of season two so far, I do think it has some pacing problems. Not every character is created equal. Not every subplot is created equal. So sometimes it feels a little bit slow. However, when the show really puts its foot down on the gas pedal, it delivers in a big way. But from here on out, I am going to be discussing spoilers because I can't call attention to both the strengths and the weaknesses of this season without getting into some details. What's fun and exciting about this new season is that there's tension, strife, and conflict. I'm pretty much every front within the show, every relationship, every organization, every team, they're all experiencing these massive internal struggles to determine the direction of the boys or to determine the direction of the seven. International supervillains are now a thing. Compound V has been added to the press and everybody knows now that superheroes are not just born from magic, that they're actually created and engineered within labs. You've got the new member of the seven, Stormfront, competing with Homelander for the spotlight. You've got Huey and Billy Butcher locking horns over the goals as well as the tactics of the boys. And you've got the boys trying to do one big job for the government so that the records can be cleaned and expunged so they can rejoin their loved ones. Because as we saw at the end of season one, Billy Butcher's wife, she's alive and well, and she's actually raising a superpowered child that she had with the Homelander. The show is a massive departure from the comics, but there's enough there where I feel like some of the broader story arcs are going to be employed. I'm keeping a very close eye on Black Noir, and readers of the comic will know precisely why, and so far we've seen him in one major action sequence that was actually teased months ago around the time of Comic-Con. And I'm also keeping a very close eye on Stormfront because while she initially was introduced as this very colorful character who doesn't care what people think about her, who doesn't indulge in all the corporate politics with the media, she refers to interviews as dick tingling these halfwits. But as we saw at the end of episode three, while her gender might be changed from the comic, her belief system is absolutely consistent with the white supremacist character that she is based upon. And if she's trying to chase down a bad guy or a supervillain and you get in her way and your skin tone happens to be darker than hers, well then really dark and evil shit is going to go down. But what's interesting about the introduction of this new character is that she's not a one-note villain. She actually has some of the funniest lines, whether she's making fun of the deep for joining the ridiculous Church of the Collective. And my hope is that the tension between her and Homelander will be one of the most interesting parts of this season moving forward. And in a strange way, she makes the Homelander seem kind of well-balanced by comparison. And the Homelander, he's a homicidal maniac. I mean, this is a guy who, when trying to teach his kid how to use his powers, would just knock him unconscious by pushing him off rooftops. And this growing tension between the two of them is so interesting, it's actually making the tension between Huey and Billy Butcher seem less interesting by comparison. I maintain that Huey remains the least interesting part of this show. He never says anything cool or funny or badass. He never really does anything dramatic. He's basically there to piss and moan and cry throughout the season. And so while I get he represents the soul of the boys, who kind of keeps them from going completely off the cliff into unethical territory. The reality is that Carl Urban as Billy Butcher is just far more charismatic. And it's a weird thing because I want to like Jack Quaid. He's the son of Dennis Quaid and Meg Ryan. I've been a fan of Dennis Quaid my whole life. But so far, the way they've had him portray the character Huey just annoys the hell out of me. So he's probably the only character I would say I outright dislike. There's some other subplots that I just think are less interesting that are slightly more boring. Queen Maeve's subplot with the girlfriend is pretty lifeless and dull. And watching the Deep go through all of his soul searching with the Church of the Collective, that's a pretty big drag on the show as well. But the show has moments where both the violence and the humor just go to these crazy heights. That the show almost feels like it has these imaginary hooks going right into my eyeballs, demanding my attention. And it has all these great dramatic moments. Like when Billy Butcher returned at the end of episode one, I was like, thank you. Like this is what the show's been missing. There was a giant hole in the show due to his absence. And I just love how Carl Urban leans into the delivery of each and every single line that he has. And I love how the show has not tapped the brakes on the gore at all. I mean, we see early on Black Noir ripping someone's head open like it's a Pez dispenser. And when Stormfront's trying to capture the brother of Kamiko, she essentially rips his hands clean off so that he can't use his powers anymore. And this show recognizes that when the superheroes are in superhero mode, let them look totally badass. Starlight looks particularly cool when her eyes start to glow and she's getting ready to cut loose. I'm actually liking the character of Starlight far more this season than I did in the previous season. 
and the humor's been fantastic as well. There's these great little recurring jokes like when Stormfront and Starlight are bemoaning the fact that their costumes have been designed without pockets. And while we can all acknowledge that Stormfront has many ethical shortcomings, she does have some really funny lines because a big part of this show is skewering all the corporate bullshit and hypocrisy that dominates the public image of Vought. And I think this show is at its strongest when it operates as a satire of corporate culture. And Giancarlo Esposito has been particularly good as Mr. Edgar, who looks at this company more as like a pharmaceutical company as opposed to a superhero company. And he's got tension with the Homelander because the Homelander basically gave away their most important product, their secret formula to Compound V. And it's really interesting seeing this building, brewing tension between the Homelander, who's basically omnipotent, and Mr. Edgar, who's just an executive, as they try to steer the company in a direction that they prefer. And I think the show's continuing to do a good job of showing what kind of hell-raising superheroes do behind the scenes, but perhaps they should do more of it. A-Train is still suffering from some horrible physical side effects from Compound V, as well as his hell-raising lifestyle. And it seems like any given moment, his heart's just going to explode and kill him outright. But that doesn't stop him from staying out all night and raising holy hell and partying like there's no tomorrow. And this season also has some really weird, gross sexual humor. We're introduced to the character of Gecko, who's basically an s and hooker behind the scenes, but he has the power to heal. So he gets together with clients and lets them do things like hack his arm off or for even more money They can chop his dick off and I just howled when I heard him tell his client that it was a thousand bucks to go all the way And the guy was like all right, well, where's the closest cash machine? But my favorite part of the show remains Anthony Starr's performance as Homelander He just seems to get all the corporate bullshit and hypocrisy and he just makes me howl with every single line and how when he's on camera, he absolutely drinks the Kool-Aid and says all the right things. And the astonishing contrast with who he really is. And how he recognizes to the public that they have to create the appearance of caring about everybody and wanting to save the world. But then behind the scenes, when they try to bring in a new member, Blindspot, who's able to fight without being able to see, Homelander basically reveals that he's the world's second most evil supervillain behind Stormfront when he smashes the guy's ears, rendering him powerless, and explains how he's running the show from now on, and no one's going to be joining the Seven unless he says so. And the scene that absolutely had me howling, which maybe suggests that I'm a slightly evil person, is when he's commanding that starlight killer boyfriend Huey. And that's probably just because I don't like the character Huey. But it almost reminded me of like fraternity hazing as Homelander's telling Starlight over and over again to kill the guy then and there. Which makes me feel a little ambivalent about our heroes of the story because on one hand this show does a brilliant job of fleshing out all the villains but they do such a good job of fleshing out the villains that it makes the heroes feel a little boring by comparison. At some point, this show needs to unleash the beast and really show what the boys are capable of because in the comics, the boys take Compound V in order to fight superheroes and really put them in their place. And right now, I feel like, apart from Billy Butcher, the members of the boys are kind of being overshadowed by the villains of the show. And as somebody who loves villainous characters, I don't have a problem with that. But from a writing standpoint, this show's going to continue to feel out of balance if they don't find a way to make the good characters feel as dramatically compelling and charismatic as some of the more sinister characters. But overall, I'm a very satisfied fan. If there were more episodes available, I'd be ripping through them right now. I can't wait to see what happens next. This is probably the first time all year where I've been jumping out of my skin wanting to know what's going to happen next. But the good news is there are tons of comics for me to sink my teeth into. If I want to see more of Black Noir or Queen Maeve or Stormfront or Homeland or any of these characters in action, and something tells me that by the end of the season, things are going to get real bloody and real nasty within the members of the Seven. And personally, I can't wait to see what murder and mayhem is coming our way. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that in the past, I've issued some words of caution where I basically have expressed some concern that the writers and producers of the show wouldn't completely, totally embrace the incredibly shocking and irreverent humor of Garth Ennis. So far this season, my fears appear to be totally unjustified. So fingers crossed that this show manages to stay the course and maintain and sustain this tone for the rest of the season. At any rate, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, hitting that notification bell. But I hope everyone has a great weekend, but more importantly, as always, onwards and upwards.